Hi, I'm Sean Gregory from Time.com, and we are here in Tenafly, New Jersey, across the Hudson River with Novak Djokovic, the fourth-ranked player in the world. And Novak is going to give us a free tennis lesson here on Time.com. Novak, thank you for, uh, so much for doing this. My pleasure. Novak, let's talk about the serve. Uh, obviously, we all can't serve uh, above 100 miles an hour like you guys. But just talk to me a little bit about you know, the motion, the angles of your body, throwing the ball up. Considering my case, I always try to uh, uh, try to toss the ball a bit higher. Tossing the ball higher gives you more time to involve your legs, which basically are maybe even the most important, uh, uh, you know, uh, part of your body for the serve, including the wrist. It's very important. The moment of impact, the moment of impact, the speed and pace where you get is from the wrist. You know, so acceleration from this part of the, exactly, from this part of the arm, from the elbow, and of course the wrist, wrist action in the end. And you want to keep your upper body as loose as possible. Are you ready? Yep. 125 down the middle. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just walk us through your forehand and also again the follow through. You know, I've heard you, you, your, all your legs should come through, you should twist on one foot. Tell me what you do. I start with the, with the right foot and if I have more time, I just try to follow through because then I get more pace and you know more more power in the shot. So if I want to produce more spin, I, I try to get from, from this back foot, you know, more acceleration from the back foot so I can get more spin. Keep your hand as relaxed as is possible because then you can actually get this follow through, which is really important in, in any shot you play, especially forehand. So I want to get that follow through. If you want to get a spin, you bend more and you do more work with your wrist. Okay, Novak, let's talk about the backhand. One hand, two hand. You have two hands. Walk us through your two-hand uh, backhand. Actually, when I started playing tennis, I started playing it for two years with a one-handed backhand. And then I decided to change because I was small, I was tiny, I was skinny with no power. And then I just got uh, frustrated by all the players playing to my backhand and I couldn't you know, get the ball back. And so I decided to play with two hands. And, and, and today I think, you know, my two-handed backhand is even, maybe even a, a best shot in, in, in my game. I try not to involve too much the wrists. The second thing is obviously a, a weight transfer and hip involvement. If I want to hit the long line, then I have to, you know, close myself a bit more. If I want to hit a cross court, then I open, up, open myself up because then I have a bigger range of you know, placing the ball more to the sidelines. People try to do the drop shot. They see somebody back in the baseline and they just try to kind of sneak it in there and then they wind up uh, hitting it five feet short. Can you just walk us through how you do the drop shot? Well, yes, drop shot is actually one of my favorite shots. It's because you, you know, you, you get to change the pace. It's much more difficult to play a drop shot from the back foot. It's much easier to play a drop shot when you're in front of your body and when your upper body is, is in, you know, forward position. So, you know, you try to open up your, your racket, uh, racket head and just go through it and, and make like a short slice. You want to make this little cut, you know, make this little spin so the ball can stop. How can you make yourself strong at the net? With the volleys, the most important thing is to try to hit the ball just in front of yourself and always keep your head still obviously, and, and try to be low, low balanced in your legs. So basically, again, you're covering this part of the court and up to here. And you want to stay a bit in, inside of the, of the service line, but not too much, because if you get too much, too close to the net, then you give your opponent option to lob you. This is the, the natural and starting position for, for the tennis player from the baseline, from the volley. You try to keep your your racket just in front of you because from here you have this motion, this motion. If you keep it here, then it takes more time to lift your head up. So this is very important to keep your head still and up. Beginning players, the, somebody makes a bad shot, the ball's up in the air, you're just ready to smash it and you either swing and miss or hit it, you know, into the net. Just help us not make that mistake. <laughs> How do you hit that smash shot well? One of the most important things is, uh, is the left arm with the right handers. This arm is, is like your target, you know? It helps you find the ball and position your body always uh, 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 
you know, in the upwards position and just be stable. And like, like at the serve, you know, you need to have this follow through and this wrist, wrist action. Exactly. It's the wrist. Exactly. You want to pop the wrist, you want to relax as much as you can the upper body, but footwork is most important because if you have a bad footwork and for example, you are, you have a narrow position of the both foot, you know, you have no balance and then you try to do different things with the upper body. But if you have a good position here, then you can do whatever with the upper body. And again, you have to keep the, the, the arm you're hitting with, you have to keep it more, very relaxed. So you wanna keep your left arm always ahead and try to search for the ball, search for the ball. Keep your, keep your legs working all the time and finding a way to hit this smash. And you wanna follow through all the time. Uh oh, uh oh, trouble, one more. Exactly. So you need to follow through. Whatever you're going against, what are some of the basic things to keep in mind uh, in returning the serve? What I like to do, I like to stay somewhere in the middle because for the first serve, because that gives me enough uh, options to block the shot and to, you know, to spin it and, and follow through. For the second serve, I like to come a bit closer to the baseline and make a split step. So what you want to do is you want to do a very small split step just to be ready and be able to, you know, accelerate from then on. Just try to make a short swing because any big swing with the big servers who <coughs> serve more than 120 miles per hour, you're losing your time. So you want to make a short swing and try to keep your upper body, keep your upper body straight all the time. So you can, you can get forward, you know, and be in the control and be in the control of the point and being aggressive. Can you serve second serve? So second serve, I start from here, I make a split step in the court and try to hit, hit the ball and get in the control of the point and get into the comfort zone if that comfort zone is on the baseline or if the second serve is very short and I have a feeling that and I see and I recognize that the return of the second serve was really good and that my opponent is stretching out and being very defensive that's when I want to move a couple of steps and, and try to hit a second shot volley. You're famous for your impressions. Want to give us any good impressions right now? <laughs> <laughs> Should I do it or not? I Come don't know. On. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's do John McEnroe because we have we never did John McEnroe. 70s and 80s, they used to wear socks like this. You have this. to have tighter shorts. Exactly. So, and I'll, I'll just try to reduce the the size of <laughs> my shorts and exactly so, something like this. John, you're never gonna forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, it was white? You cannot be serious! You cannot be serious! <laughs> and things like that. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs>